Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah al-Kareem Wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in Ashadu ala ilahi illallahu wa atil ashrikullah Wa asharu muhammadin abduhu wa rasul Ya ayyuhu al-lazina amunu wa taqallah haqa tukatihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayyuhu al-insana taqa rabbukul maladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidin wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa bitha rajalin kathirin wa nisa'a wa taqa la tasa'aluna bihi wa rarham inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba Ya ayu ladina amanu wa taqala wa kulu kaulin sadida Yuslihakum wa malakum wa yagfirlakum da nubakum Wa ma yutillah wa rasuluhu baqad fazan fawza azimah Inna alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Huwa Allah di jamla muslimin I am very very happy to be with all of you on this special occasion First and foremost, to be Muslims. Nothing's better than knowing the truth about our purpose of life, why we were created, who our creator really is, and what must we do to serve him, to gain his pleasure, and to gain paradise. Nothing is better than that. Again, Another blessed occasion to be gathered, or as they say in Arabic, jama'ah, here on Yom Jumma, the day of gathering. And another blessed occasion, we're approaching the month of Shah Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, as you know, this is a month of mercy, a month of forgiveness, a month of purifying ourselves, our intentions, our souls, and all of this Allah giving us. So it's a good cause for celebration today. Usually we think of Eid, you know, the celebration after Ramadan. But I like to celebrate going in as well, because I'm very happy, happy that I'm a Muslim. We recently made a promotion, a little promo you put on TV for Guide Us TV. And we asked the people at a big conference in Chicago, tell us about Guide Us TV. And each one said, oh, we need it, it's nice, we like it, it's brand new, it's doing good things, you know, things like that. But one little girl just looked at the camera and she said, I'm a Muslim and I'm proud of it. Proud to be a Muslim. I said, this is the one I like best of all the promo we have. That's the best part. I'm a Muslim, and I'm proud of it. It's to understand what this deen is really about. It's not just that you could sit and read and learn, study, because it's important, of course. But it's also, what is the feeling I get when I read and study? Sometimes we hear about teachers who teach Qur'an with a stick in one hand and the book in the other hand. This is frightening. The child is only going to learn just to keep from being whipped. And certainly this is not something our Prophet ﷺ ever did. Nor would he have approved of it, I'm sure. So when children have learned this way, you can see why when they become teenagers, they, they drift away. Even though the meaning is there, even though the understanding is there, at the same time, there's this feeling of fear. Not even a fear of Allah, just a fear of somebody with a stick. But for some of us who were searching for the truth, asking, we didn't even know who to ask. Do I ask Jesus? Huh? Well, that's what Christians do. Many times they ask Jesus. Or do I ask the Father? They believe that God is the Father. But it's not really until you ask the one that Jesus used to pray to. And that's what I did. 
Somebody told me, a Muslim told me, did Jesus pray? Yeah, he prayed. Did he tell you to pray? Um, yeah, that's in the Bible. So he prayed and he told you to pray. Who did he pray to? And that's a good question. Who did Jesus pray to? Suddenly you start thinking. As many, many of the Christians have started thinking when we ask them this question. If Jesus prayed... To whom did he pray? So I said, okay. When I had my head on the ground, some of you know the story how I came to Islam, and I had my head on the ground, and I said, oh God, because I know he prays to God, guide me. I wasn't even sure what to call God. But as soon as I said it, as soon as I said it, I couldn't say another single word. By the way, I'm never at a loss for words. Almost never. I can talk and talk and talk. That's why they let me give speeches. Because he can talk. But I couldn't that day. Not on that time, not that occasion. When I said, oh God, guide me, suddenly I realized it's not time to talk. It's time to listen. But listen to what? Listen to what? It wasn't very long until someone told me in Arabic, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim." Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Ikra bismi Rabbika ladi khalaq. Ikara wa rabuka al-akram Aladhi alamu bil kalam Alam al-insanam alam yalam Recite. This is what you listen to. The reciting. Al-Quran means the reciting. The recitation. And ikra means you recite. In the last hundred years, the meaning of the word read has changed drastically. Before, when they translated it to English, they said read, and it meant recite from memory. Today, read means pick up a piece of paper, like I have here, and, okay, uh, we have five people who will do shahada right after the Salat al Jummah. That's actually what's on here. So I know you don't want to run away. <laughs> but that's reading. But reciting, especially reciting from Quran, that's what we listen to. That was 20 years ago this month. 20 years ago this month on the sun calendar in July. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. What does this have to do with the month of Ramadan? <gasps> oh, so glad you asked me. Because Allah tells us about this in the Quran. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rizim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr Wa ma anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr What is this laylatul qadr? It's better, Khairam min alfi shahr. Better than a thousand days, nights, weeks, months. Better than a thousand months. That's longer than most of us are ever going to live. We added it all up. By the way, it's like 83 and a half years, something like that. Better than what? A lifetime. Better than a lifetime. One night. And it is the month in which Allah sent down Hidayah, guidance for all mankind. Never was it done like this before. Always before, Allah sent prophets from amongst the people themselves to give them the message. Regardless of where they were on the earth, we know that Allah has sent more, more than 124,000 prophets. 
throughout the centuries, to their people to command them to do good and forbid evil, and above all, to worship the Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. But on the occasion of Laylatul Qadr, Allah sent down the Hidayah for all mankind and jinn for eternity. No wonder it's an amazing night. This is, what did they say in Arabic? Ajib, amazing. And by the way, you and I can cash in on a grand opportunity in just a few days. Because that night will reoccur again in the month of Ramadan. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that there comes upon you now. He was in the last, the very last of this month of Shaban. He was. And he told his companions, there comes upon you now a month. He's talking about Ramadan. Wherein there is a day, the night of which is better than a thousand months. What was he talking about? What was he talking about? Huh? al Fishak. He was talking about the Laylatul Qadr. Some people said, we don't know what night it is. Just get up every night, worship Allah, and hope you catch it. Huh? Others said, no, we have hadith. It's on an odd night, okay? That'd be one, three, seven, five, nine, an odd number. But then you'd have a problem because if you weren't sure which night we started on, <laughs> back to getting up every night. Then some, we know Hadith, in the last 10 days or nights of Ramadan. And then one specifically says the 27th. Clearly says the 27th. So I heard all of this. 20 years ago when I got to Islam, and I listened to it. I even listened to some brothers want to argue about it, almost like going to break out into a fight. I said, you know what? There's no problem for me. I'll just get up every night. I'm not going to miss this chance. A lifetime? Besides, I should be getting up every night and thanking Allah for bringing me to Islam anyway. No problem. And Allah made it easy for me. So easy. Because he took away the dunya from my heart. He took this dunya totally away. Physically took it away. I lost everything when I came to Islam. In the material sense and I gained everything in the akhir. At first I was confused. Why am I losing? My businesses are gone. I lost my houses. I lost my property. I lost so many things. Even my family. What happened? Then I came to Ramadan. And I suddenly I realized, in a house, out in the country, with no electricity. Well, you can't imagine, in America, no electricity? That's right, no electricity. We had water, we had the gas, the butane, that's it. You can say, this is miskeen, this is poor. Not really, this is rich. Because if you don't have electricity, you can't play with a computer. Huh? Back then, my computer work was very limited. We didn't have internet yet, you know. And you can't sit up and watch television. No electricity. In fact, you can't even sit and read, hardly, because all you got is... Maybe gas light, a candle, a lantern, something like that. So what's left? Go to sleep. But if you go to sleep early, what will happen? Well, you'll wake up in the middle of the night, won't you? Yeah. And then what? Make wudu. And you pray to Allah. And how long? Well... You had good rest, so you stay up a half hour, an hour, maybe even two hours. Then you become a little tired, you go back to sleep and then wake up for Fajr. And that happened, just like that. I didn't realize how really fortunate, really lucky was I not to have all the distraction of the dunya. Because I made the whole entire month easy. 
getting up, I'm crying to Allah, oh Allah, I need my things back. <laughs> I'm asking for the things back. And it was after Ramadan was over, I realized, no, I already have everything I need. I have Allah. What do I need in this dunya? What do I need? Stop and ask yourself this question. What do I need right now? I need air. That's number one. If we don't have any air, we're already dead. Air. Okay. Who gives us air? Allah. Okay. What else? Food. When we leave here, many of us are going to eat. It's not Ramadan yet. Who gives us the food? Allah. Drink. Allah. Even our rizq is coming from Allah. So this is all I need. I need Allah. I need Islam. And after that, what do I need? I don't like to be lonely. I don't want to be all alone. That was one thing in those days, my first Ramadan. I didn't want to be alone. So I would get a ride. Somebody would take me into the city, take me into town so I could go to the masjid to be with the brothers. When they would break fast, be all together, hugging each other, huh? eating together, taraway together, and then somebody bring me back out to the house. Think about it. What do I really need? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for what Allah gave us. Alhamdulillah for the hidayah that Allah sent down in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him to keep waking us up to the value of this beautiful deen called Islam. Amen. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. فَإِنَا إِسْتَقَ حَدِيثِ كِتَابَ اللَّهُ وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِيَ هَدِيَ مُحَمِّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَشُرُوا الْمُورِ مُتَّثَاتِهَا وَكُلِي مُتَّثَاتٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلِي بِدْعَةٍ دَلَالَةٍ وَكُلِي دَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Alhamdulillah that Allah has blessed us, all of us, to be here today. And a big part of gathering is the gathering itself. The blessing that comes by being with people who know and understand how you feel. No one can really appreciate the feelings of the Muslim except another Muslim. Because at the core of our feelings is our love for Allah. At the very base of everything we desire, we desire to be with Allah in the Jannah. There are some hadiths sayings from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, telling us in the Jannah, in the Jannah, those who are really fortunate will be close to Allah and close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and all the Prophets. I want to be in that place. Of course we all want to go to Jannah, but I want to strive to do what it takes to get to the best place. Because after you get there, stop and think, you've made Jannah, what if you were at the low place of Jannah? It would be great, but still, how could you change? You don't get to change after you get there. So I want to strive now to do the best. Don't just settle for, okay, I hope I get in the door, which is good, don't get me wrong, but still, we should work hard. And part of doing that is in this life to purify ourselves. One of the kinds of purification we talk about is our intention, our niya. Inama amalu bin niya. This is the saying of the Prophet wasalam, that all of the reward, your actions for your deeds, everything is going to be based on what? The niya, the intention. So it needs to be purified. This intention has to be for Allah. I want Allah to accept from me, but how will it be if I was really not doing it all for Allah? Here's a teaching that we learn in Islam that I didn't know before. When in my previous, people say previous life, meaning before I came to Islam, in my previous religion, we believed that it's okay to give charity, you'll get reward for it. Yes, 
There's nothing new about that. But along the way, you could kind of let people see you give charity. huh? And this is, by the way, condemned in the Bible to show it off. But a lot of us, we would do that. I want to be sure, if I donated $1,000 to my church, I like for people to know I did it, you know? Like my company donated 1000 this week, maybe 1000 the next week. You like to have them mention it or something, like I have a, a plaque on the wall, they put up who did what this week, how much they donate, things like that. But in Islam, if you do that, that means you wanted some reward from the people. You wanted attention or approval from the people, and this is not acceptable. Not to Allah. And maybe you say, well, it's just a little bit. No. You do it all for Allah, or it's not for Allah. All or nothing. He doesn't accept 99%. He accepts 100%, and that's it. Imagine that. So we have to correct our intention. No matter what it is that we did, I want to do a good deed to help somebody. Maybe I want to help a poor person or an orphan. Maybe I just want to cheer somebody up, make them feel better. If I do it only for the sake of Allah, then the people don't have to know I did it. One example that I've seen in Islam, and you can do this too, if you know somebody is miskeen, somebody needs help, financial help, and you don't want to embarrass them anyway. You know, walk up to them, I heard you're having a hard time. You don't have a good job, so here's a hundred bucks. Oh, that's not nice. In front of all the people you did that, he doesn't feel good at all now, does he? But suppose you know somebody, he needs help. You put the money in an envelope. You seal it up. You don't even write anything on it. Then you can give it to them and say, Somebody said to give this to you. That's it. Or even, you could just lay it inside, maybe as the window is rolled down on the car, just drop it in there. And if you said, well then how do I know for sure he got it? Maybe somebody else opened the car door. Maybe his kids opened the envelope. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But you did it for Allah. Allah will take care of it. You have the reward. That's what you wanted. You don't need to stick around and make sure. Did he open it? Did he open it up? What did he do? What did his face look like? Ah, he got it. And then you pass by him and go, like, what's that? You lose the reward. So to make the intention purely for Allah, this is number one. But then after that is the tezkiyah, or the purification of our nafs, of our ruh, of our soul. We really have to work on that. And this is a great chance. Hard to do that usually. Hard to do that any time of the year. It is. We know that. Hard to keep the intention really clean. Except one month. One month it becomes easy. The month wherein the Prophet ﷺ told us, the shaitan is tied up. He's tied up. And one brother told us in Ramadan, he said, I don't understand why it says the shaitan is tied up. There's still some bad things, you know. He said, brother, he said tied up, not dead. Okay, he's still around, but he just doesn't have the leeway that he did before. It's easier for you to do good and easier to stay away from the bad. That's more or less what the scholars say. The meaning, try your best in this month coming up Maybe you'd like to make a little schedule, something to write down so you can follow it. Or you can go to a website that's developed just for this purpose. It should be operating tomorrow morning. So it's a little, the time is different back in the States than it is here. But it should be operating tomorrow morning with this encouragement. It's called FastRamadan.com. And whenever you sign up, it will, you choose what you want. I want to memorize more Quran, I need to know more Hadith, I need to learn about this, I want to do more charity, I want to be nicer to my family, whatever. You have a long list of things to choose from. And as you check off those things, then what day you like to be reminded, how frequently, then when you give your email, 
that we'll send out to you some encouragement, some little reminders from the Prophet Sallallahu from Quran, and help you to remember to do these good deeds. I've seen many people use this. In fact, you can see them too, because there's a map on there that shows you where all the people are who signed up for it, and how many things they signed up for. It'll say four or five or seven. One of them, I saw it said 20 something. I'm thinking, boy, this guy really had a lot to work on. But you'll see it on there, the things you can choose from. You might try that. Or do your own system. The most important thing, though, is remember that in this month, you can change. You can change. We know that everything is in the control of Allah. Everything is in the control of Allah. And He is really the one who changes the conditions. Yes or no? And what did He say about it? Allah says in the Quran, He does not change the conditions of the people until the people change themselves. May Allah make us change for the better. May Allah make us appreciate and understand what this deen is about. May Allah keep our intention for Him. May Allah purify us. And may Allah forgive us. And may Allah grant us His genital for those. Al-Ala. Rabbana ati nafi dunya hasan wa fila firti hasan wa kina daban nar. Rabbana la tu zig kulubana bada idha daytana wa hab lana mala duka rahman akanta wa hab. Allahumma inni dhalam tu nafsi dhuman kathirin wa la yagfur dhu nubayla kukfurli magfurtim in indika wa hamni in ahta for Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim in ahta amadun majin. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. And by the way, don't forget we're going to have something right after the Salah. You want to be sure and be here when we give the gifts to the five new Muslims that are coming in right now. Okay? Let's do this Salah as though it was our last.